hello let me move this really quick hello this is how we're gonna open this vlog i want to show you my visco girl fake hydro flask because i'm not paying 50 dollars for a hydro flask so i put a bunch of stickers on them some really subtle ones that people at work are gonna just love to see like nasty woman gender roles r.i.p just not girly things, just non-binary things. I'm not non-binary. I'm trying to make a joke and it didn't work. So another thing though, have you seen the Harry Styles clip where he's at talking about this girl and saying like vodka straight? Why does he? No, that's not his accent. He's like vodka straight and she says no, gay. And he goes, not you. <laughs> vodka straight, no, gay. So I don't know if I can have vodka <laughs> on my water bottle. So it originally says you know, the actual quote, which is vodka straight, no gay, but I have to put this sticker on it at work. So it just says straight, no gay, which, T, my subtle way of letting everyone know what I'm about. What I'm also about is this Christmas book I'm reading. I'm reading In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. I'm reading two things currently. One's an audiobook, one's a physical book. We'll talk about her first. I just started today actually during lunch and I got to page 79. Something about romances right now, I am speeding through them. I think it's because I'm so stressed at work that I want something that I don't have to learn an entire new world in. I just get to find out about characters, I guess. So I'm on chapter 10, but because it's a Christmas one, I'm using one of my new Christmas bookmarks that I bought a while ago. And it's Cindy Lou, but it's her coffee order. And I have one of these exact bookmarks uh, for... Mr. Darcy as well. So when I start reading all my classics, that was my classic bookmark that I bought. It's from Love You More Studios if you're interested. But as far as Ill Holidays go, I'm really liking this. It reads just like a movie. And I think when it comes to my romance, I just want it to read like a movie. Like that's my, that's my niche romance is basically I want to read movies in a novelization. <laughs> I don't know. So we follow our main character, uh, May, and she is going home from her family's like annual Christmas vacation. They vacation there with, I believe, two other families, and they've been doing it for like 30 years. They did it as newlyweds. They brought their kids there for like their first Christmases, all of that. So there's a lot of memories. Sorry, I'm checking on Ginger. She just got back from the vet, so she's acting really weird, but she's okay. They put her on antibiotics, and I have to give her those through a syringe for 14 days, so she's gonna be hating me for 14 days, but it's okay. We'll get through it. Anyways, they're there. They decide that something is... Two things happen that I'm not gonna go into because I don't know if they're technically spoilers, but... I'm just some stuff happens there where she's like oh man this sucks and on the drive home with her parents she just thinks show me what's gonna make me happy in life and then there is screeching tires Christmas tree truck flying their way broken glass as she wakes up in the airplane and she's living the day over again but she's aware of it so she recruits her <laughs> stoner uncle to help her out which he's an amazing character already I love him and she has a crush on one of the family friends and it's so adorable I don't really understand like I'm not really sure how to picture some of them because I feel like the descriptions weren't super in-depth although maybe I was just excited to like keep reading and laugh that I didn't pay attention so I might need to go back but I'm picturing this guy from Crazy Rich Asians as the, like, who I think is going to be the love interest because why wouldn't I do that? Hello? And I don't know who I'm picturing the girl as. Insert someone. <laughs> I'm really liking this. I'm going to keep going with it tonight. Hopefully finish it early this week. And then we're writing our first Goodreads review in years. So it's probably going to be rough, but we'll get through it. The other book that I have over here next to me that I'd like to keep going on with, I don't really know, this is, I'm just meandering through this book, is Majesty by Catherine McGee. We will 
see. And then I still have one of us is lying. So we'll see when I get that audiobook again. It might be a, a while. So surprisingly, I'm not really in the mood for any fantasy, like high fantasy. I was hoping to maybe get to Ruthless Gods or Kingsbane, but I might pick up The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue after I finish In a Holidays. Looking forward to that. Audiobook wise, I am now listening to Where the Crawdads Sing again because my hold came like right back to me. I guess she did not want to read that book very long. So we're following two timelines. One, we're following a very young girl who's just trying to make it in the southern swamps of her little town and her dad's just super absent. Her mom has disappeared. All her siblings leave eventually and she's the only one left, which kind of got, that's awful. I hate it. Um, I don't know if that's how things were done in 1956, but it shouldn't be because that sucks. So we're just watching her. She's adorable. I feel like I'm reading a middle grade in her chapters, a very sad middle grade. And then in the other chapters we're following, I think it's in 1969, the town's golden boy is mysteriously found dead and they're investigating what happened and I'm pretty sure I mean it would only make sense that the two timelines intersect at some point I just don't know when but I'm reading this like I said from my library so let me see how far I am I'm 26% of the way in so I think if I keep listening to it I will definitely get through this one this week but I've been listening to a new true crime podcast so it's been kind of hard to do that I was listening to Jensen and Holes which is the murder squad on Spotify. It's on My Favorite Murders Network, which is just amazing. It's exactly right. Yeah, I'm really liking it. I'm listening to the episode that's about that one. There was a black woman who was at a sleepover, like an adult sleepover with all white women, and then I think like a couple of their husbands, and somehow mysteriously she's found like completely beaten up and dead. Fell off of a balcony at two stories, which wouldn't kill you I think unless you swan dove off, which she was proven she did not. It's an unsolved one. Their whole podcast is basically giving you all of the information to help like armchair sleuths and detectives online solve the cases. And they have had multiple cases reopened because of the podcast, which is like super cool. So I'm getting into the on. But for right now, let's get into I got mine today, so I'm excited. So we should open it together. I know what the book is because like that um, website I tell you all about all the time, but oh, I think we have a blanket this month, which I love getting their blankets. I need to get, this is gonna be a really weird thing to like send out to ask y'all for advice, but if you have advice on how to store blankets, like aesthetically and cutely, please let your girl know because I really need to, I need to organize my library so badly and I need to spruce it up mainly organization. I need to find more ways to have some organization. So like I said, the first thing I see is this throw blanket. It's a Nevermore throw blanket. So I'm assuming this is Edgar Allan Poe. It says it features the full text of the Raven by Poe, which is so cool. My stepmom actually got me a I guess congrats on becoming a teacher present, which was an Edgar Allan Poe blanket. So now that I have two, I can have one in here and one in my living room or maybe one at work. I don't know. Not right now. Probably don't want to bring that up there right now, but maybe one day when the world's not falling apart. Who knows when that is. So the next thing is the candle. It is the black flame candle and it smells so good. It's just a very plain chilling out candle, but man, this is Essence of Vanilla and Bourbon. It's from Novel Yours, and honestly, I kind of want to buy a huge one of this. I don't know what it is about it, but I, I love Bath and Body Works candles. So they're really cool, but there's something unique about bookish candles that I love lighting them when I'm reading books. It just feels like a whole experience. Maybe I'm alone in that, but <laughs> I mean, it's true. Next up, we have the pin, which my pin looks like she has been through it, but it's this cute little hand just holding a rose. Then I pull out this, which I think I also know what this is. I'm really bad at spoiling myself all the time on the Instagram. Yep, I knew what it was. So I really like this. These are skull-shaped spoons. They said they're coffee spoons, so I'm assuming that you just stir your coffee or tea with these. 
So I'll definitely put these out there next to our Keurig we're starting. We have to order it from Amazon, but we're gonna set up a little like coffee bar area that we're gonna order a whole organizer for it. So it's not gonna be on the counter. It's gonna be its whole little like own standing thing, which I'm very excited for. So those will look really cute on there for like the Halloween edition. Then we have I think this is a lip balm and it's Sleepy Hollow. It's a pumpkin spice flavor. So we're gonna test this out. It kind of smells like Hobby Lobby, but it doesn't smell like the homophobia and misogyny that's in there. So that's good. Just smells like the pumpkin and the spice. I can dig it. I can get with it. I've never used a bookish lip balm. Okay, I wanted to make sure it was actually a lip balm because I was like, what if I'm like just rolling a fragrance on my lips and people are like at home. <laughs> Next. I think this is the bookmark everyone's freaking out about in the Facebook group that I'm in, which I'm not really sure why, but it is a Ouija board. Well, it's the planchette and it says death before DNF, which I think is adorable. So I think this is a bookmark. So that's really cute. It's a really short bookmark, I guess. I never really know how to use those bookmarks that are just a string with two pretty things attached to the end of it. I assume one usually dangles out, but this would not do that. This would dangle out of like a mouse size book, <laughs> but not any book I have. So maybe that's not how they're supposed to work, but wouldn't be the first time I was using something wrong the entire time I've been using it. It surely would not be. And now I guess we just have zip book. Oh, it is like a vacuum sealed. So I'm not gonna lie to you. I have no idea what this book is about, but I definitely love it for just the cover. It's absolutely beautiful. And it is horrid. I really, this is really pretty. I don't know what it's about though. What are you about, girl? So it's about this girl whose dad dies and because of that, her and her mom pack up and move from California to Maine. And I guess they find, she finds a storage room that has been kept locked and is actually a little girl's room that was left untouched for years. And it's not as empty as it seems. That's creepy. I love it. Maybe we'll add that to the October. I'm doing the Fortnite Frights readathon, so maybe that fits a category. Not really sure. Oh, so this is what the original versus the owl crate looks like. I appreciate that. I really do like the red. I think the red looks really nice. The black does too, but you know what this will look good with? Black sprayed edges. You know what it's gonna get? Black sprayed edges. I'm gonna save up so many books and just go ham spraying the edges it's not spraying them it's painting them i know but still and then we have the card that is for next month and that is legends and lore this is so beautiful their cards are always so gorgeous i have no use for them but i just want to save them i mean they could be bookmarks everything i have i'm turning into bookmarks to be fair there you go i'm going to now go and i'm read in the holidays because i'd really like to get to addy larue this week and soon it's on my tbr so what would it be like if i actually read books on my tbr we wouldn't even know how to act i'm also just really enjoying this and people i really trust and like liked addy larue so i'm just i'm excited so let me go put my spoons up <laughs> what a what a phrase Wow, didn't look at myself before I turned this camera on. Hi. <laughs> I look how I feel, rough. Because of that, I picked up a comfort book and two comfort authors for the week. I am talking to you right now while my partner's in the shower, so if you can hear that in the background, sorry, but this is the time I have because I am officially done planning the rest of the week out. It is actually gonna go according to plan this time. What even? That hasn't happened since school started, so very cool. 
Let's talk about books. So, I finished In a Holidays by Christina Lauren last night. I ended up giving it four stars. I really enjoyed this one, which means probably people who read predominantly romance are not going to. I have noticed that with a lot of Christina Lauren's recent books, people have just not been liking them as much. This one has a lot of tension. It has a lot of angst. It's like childhood friends to lovers. I think that trope, is that a, is that a trope? Because it's not just friends to lovers, it's like childhood friends to closer friends to then lovers. And I really like that. There's even a hint of a love triangle, but it's, I actually really like love triangles. I can say that this is not like, not a love triangle that I think people are gonna like really not like. I did like it, I think that from the last Christina Lauren book I read was The Unhoneymooners. That one, in comparison to the very little romance that I have read, felt more like a romance book, just in the writing. I don't know if that even makes sense, <laughs> but that writing felt more romance. This one felt more like contemporary fiction that has a pretty big plot line based in romance. I know that I am I'm predominantly a fantasy sci-fi reader, so this is definitely not my genre. Don't know a whole lot about it. Um, it's All I really know is sci-fi fantasy, horror, and sometimes thrillers, but I'm not going to pretend like I'm super well-versed in thrillers either, but I'm definitely not well-versed in romance. But You Deserve Each Other and The Hun Honeymooners and now in a holidays are probably some of my favorite oh in the hating game i love that one but the thing that they all have in common is it's a lot of angst and they kind of get together right at the very end which i feel like maybe that's something that a lot of readers who don't read a bunch of romance really like but romance readers are reading romance for like the romance you know what i mean so i don't know i don't know i don't know how that's gonna go for people who liked their like beautiful bastards series i tried to read that i read the opening scene of the very first book and i was like hello <laughs> and i put it away not because it's bad it's just i know what i like and that wasn't it <laughs> that's all so yeah finish that one we already got a book finished for the week then i decided to put down where the crawdads sing because i just wasn't feeling it at the moment because it was rainy it was dark outside it was spooky so i picked up <sighs> you'll never believe it i picked up the diviners again this will be my fifth read of the diviners uh i'm fine totally okay uh this school year is rough so i was just like let me let me just read something that I know I'm gonna like and have a good time. I love that I have the train near our house going off and the shower. Like, this is just top tier vlogging for you. Here you go. So, that's what I'm listening to. Like I said, already read that a ton. I'll talk about that book later if you want me to summarize it or anything like that. Well, this is a vlog, so you're gonna get it either way. Skip ahead if you don't want it. But, favorite series of all time. The last book was a tragedy. The main reason I want to reread the entire series is because with my new rating system, I really want to see how they would rank. I think the first three will still be five stars. I think the last one's going to be a three star. And like disappointment level of the last one is like a two star. I was so disappointed because I think it was supposed to be a six book series and they put it into four and you could tell. it sad. So physically I am chipping away at Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. This is the second book in the Stormlight Archive series and oh man this follows a bunch of different people. My favorite person, well there's two people I love that we're following and I don't know how to pronounce their names so please don't come for me. One of my favorites is Kaladin. That is our main character. He was a slave in the first book and then he is kind of working his way up in the ranks of the army of the kingdom that we're following and then the other person i really like is uh i think shallon and she is she's now gone to this woman to learn how to is that a spoiler can't remember these books are so long honestly it feels like i've read five books every time i read one of them so i can't really remember if it's a spoiler for like the end of the book but basically she goes to be an apprentice of someone <laughs> 
cool. My two favorite things are people working their way up from like trenches to the high ranking in armies and then um, apprenticeships, especially based around magic or mythology, which this one is. So that's the first book. Very terrible summary. I will link uh, the amazing, amazing Elliot Brooks, who I watch, who summarizes and reviews everything so much better than I can, but I'm liking it. I am about 150, no, I'm 163 pages in, which sounds like a lot, but it's 1,200 pages. And then the other book I'm reading, which I'll, I'll definitely finish way sooner, is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Can you believe it? I cannot. So I honestly will give a better summary of these in the morning when I have more energy, but we're about to go to bed, so. I just wanted to give an update before we actually did that, but I'm about 50 pages into this. I might try to get to 100 so I can get kind of a feel of the story before I actually give you an update. But yeah, that is it. Hope I survive Thursday and Friday. Goodbye. Hello everybody, it's Friday. We're walking, we're talking. Um, I got a random package in the mail. I don't know what it is, so I've decided now When I get these I'm just gonna open all of them on camera just to be safe because I feel like we got really good arc mail last week, so Mayhaps We will see although this feels like a hardcover Wait a second am I exposing myself for buying another journal? I didn't need <gasps> I am <laughs> No Oh wow, <laughs> what a morning look. So normally on Saturdays I get dressed and look presentable, but man, do I not feel like it. So I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Imagine that. I just got back from getting a pumpkin cream cold brew. I haven't been having these as much as I did last year because I feel like my soul's leaving my body when I have cold brew, but today's a good day for that because I really need to focus on reading. This is just the book sleeve. <laughs> and that is Miss Addie LaRue. So I talked about this a little bit before, but I didn't really have a very good grip on the story. So what happens is we are following Adeline LaRue, who is a young girl living in, I'm just gonna guess the French countryside. And she wants a big adventure in the great wide somewhere. She does not want to be the person that's tied down to a man, has to marry just to like do the next steps in life. She wants an adventure. She wants to go live her life. And it comes to a head when she's being forced to do those things that she does not want to do. So she goes and she makes a wish and the mistake was Making wishes and trying to make deals with gods and whatnot during the day is fine because those are like the good ones, but when it comes to the ones that come out at night, you never want to make a deal with them because they are bad, have ill intentions, etc, etc, etc. So obviously she makes a deal with one that comes out at night because that's how the story goes. <laughs> and I'm on page 92 now and there's two, you're following the timeline when she first becomes the invisible girl. And then you're following her in 2014. And what I do know of the plot is that eventually at a used bookstore, she's going to run into someone who does remember her. I don't know when that's going to happen. I think it's soon-ish. Maybe not that soon. It's V.E. Schwab. So maybe like page 200. But I'm really loving this. I was just on my... Uh, I was just on the phone with B, my best friend. And we were talking about this book. And they're also reading it right now. And they cracked me up because they were like, man, I want to highlight everything. I'm such a for pros. And I'm like, yes, that literally is exactly how I feel because I feel like everything in this book is written so beautifully. It reminds me so much of The Starless Sea. I have also read The Night Circus now, but the writing doesn't remind me of The Starless Sea or this for some reason. 
Um, I'm not really sure why since it is the same author. I mean, obviously not this, but Aaron Morgenstern wrote both The Night Circus and The Starless Sea, so you would think that they would feel similar, but they don't. I like The Starless Sea more. This is good. I'm excited to get to the part where we meet someone that actually remembers her. I think that that's going to be super interesting. Muy excited. Uh, the other thing I've done, let me go get it because... I didn't stick to a TBR, I surely didn't. So, the other book I picked up, which is on audio and I'm almost done with it already, is The Diviners. Yes, I've read this, we're at time five, I think? Maybe six? I don't know. Goodreads is off by one, so whatever it is on Goodreads, add this one and another one, and then that's it. <laughs> we'll figure that out later. But, I'm about halfway through, and I'm just listening to the audiobook, because I was listening to a few audiobooks on the way to work and whatnot, and I just was not finding myself excited to listen to them, and I really don't like when that happens because I genuinely love audiobooks. I love being excited to get in the car or to get, like, some reason to drive because that's usually when I listen to audiobooks. Sometimes I'll do it when I'm working or when I'm editing videos and stuff, but not as often because it's just easier when I'm in the car. But I just wasn't excited to pick up anything that I was reading at the moment, so I went back to one that I'm always excited for, The Diviners. And like one of my friends, Whitney, always describes this as, it's basically, if you've ever watched BuzzFeed Unsolved, the Paranormal Edition with Shane and Ryan. It's a bigger group, it's like five, four or five people, but it's very much that same vibe of BuzzFeed Unsolved because they're just trying to solve this paranormal mystery. But it's set in the 1920s, so it's got the Great Gatsby vibes. And it gives me the Great Gatsby vibes from the movie adaption with Leonardo DiCaprio, not the book. So I definitely recommend this book to everyone. I I think I've already said it before in this vlog, but I wanted to reread it so I could rate all the books with the new rating system I use, especially the last one. The last two I really want to run through that because I've only read the last two one time. I've read this and Layer of Dreams. I think this is, we'll just go with five. Layer of Dreams is probably two or three times. So I really just want to reread the whole series in one go. And I feel like this is the perfect time of year to do that. So that's what we're doing. Also, isn't this copy just the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in the world? And look at all my tabs. There's so many. But yeah, anyways, other than that, I'm gonna go do what I do and read. I'm gonna put on some ambiance. I got a record player, but I don't have that many records, so I need to get more records to put on while I read, but that would be very, that would be aesthetic, wouldn't it? But yeah, I'm gonna go. Goodbye. I met an old man I said, tell me your story He took out a notepad And wrote something for me Hello everyone. So it is Sunday. We just got back from our grocery pickup and coffee. And now I'm sitting here with my planners and I'm tired. But I haven't done literally any reading. I have some books to show you guys that I got in the mail. But other than that, I haven't done any reading. I've been doing a lot of planner stuff. So I posted on my Instagram that I was doing a lot of planner stuff. So I figured that I would answer the questions that I got on Instagram here because I got a lot of them and I do use I okay so also I'll show this shelf in a second but I um, use this bullet journal for my reading journal and then I use this journal for just any like bookish aesthetics or honestly any memories or any scrapbook ish kind of things that I want to do I put it in here 
and then I have my work planner which is turning more into a daily planner which is this one it's if you know anything about planners it's an a6 rings from foxy fix and I'll show you guys what's in here it's pretty cute I just finished setting it up for fall so I really like it but I have just my monthly and then I have my to do for the week and I've been using a bunch of stickers that I have because I used to plan in an Erin Condren but we don't like Erin Condren anymore messy messy lady so I am looking at getting an A5 planner to do planning with stickers again because let me show you I think they were really cute so this is the planner I used to use and I use this mainly during student teaching and honestly it just made me happy because it was so cute looking and it just just made my heart happy you know so let me show you some spreads so this is what I had and so I would just have you know spreads you know you know and then sometimes I do the monthly not always but, like, this is just so cute. I just, I love it. And I miss it. And I want to do it again. But not in here. So, I have all of these. And a lot of these are, like, extras left over. But all of this back here, both of these stacks are full-on kits that I just haven't used. So, so yeah, that's... That's that's been the dilemma of the weekend. I bought a lot of stuff to set up this planner and I want to do a minimal look with it. And if you don't care about planner talk, just skip ahead, it's fine. But I want to do more minimal planning with it. I don't want it to be super intense with a bunch of kits and stuff like that. But I do still want to use the kits because I like them. And like I showed you with this, like they're just cute. And I actually do flip back through these a lot. It's just, do I want to take the plunge and buy the planner or wait and see, but like, wait for what, you know? So we bought a printer today and I have some paper that's coming from Amazon. So I'm going to print out the inserts and just plan out a week and see how I like it. And if I like it, which I think I will, cause it's the exact same layout as Aaron Condren. If I like it, then I'm going to buy it because I just, it's really fun. And the sticker planning, is a different kind of creative than my um, memory bullet journal. The memory bullet journal is just literally like if I want to make a page for any show, movie, thing we did, book I read, that's all in there. But here is like actual specific weeks and everything that's happening in my life. And I just like that because I have really awful memory. And like I was just looking at... Um, the spirals this morning that I just showed you and I saw like the first date that we ever had and whenever um we like I could look at the pages and I could still remember everything that we were doing and it just helps my memory so that's why but I'm still trying hard to justify buying another planner as you can see I have a few but these are this is a traveler's notebook and then these are a6 rings that I just like the colors and I ordered a white one from Moterm, so that'll be here in like a month, but yeah. Other than that, I know that I like this, but I don't want to, if I try to do too much decoration in here, it becomes not functional anymore, and because I need it at work, like this is just, I don't like explaining like when people are like, oh my god, do you have stickers in your planner? I do, Karen, leave me alone. So anyways, let's talk about the books that I bought, because I haven't read any. So I got this beautiful edition of Dracula. I talk about it a lot. Dracula is one of my favorite books ever. It's what really got me into gothic literature and horror in general. And it's just such a cute, I think it's the Halloween edition or something like that. And it's really cute. I really like it. So I got that off of Book Depository. And then I got some book mail from Books IT. And she said, just a little something. But I thought these would be fun fall reads in the chapstick I just thought was cute. Which she did. I already put it up so that I would remember to use it in my chapstick drawer. Yes, I have that. No dry lips here. But she got me these s'mores chapsticks, which is so cute. I didn't even know that was a thing, but I love it. Uh, 
And then she also got me a skeleton in the family, which this is a cozy mystery that I've wanted to read since one of my friends posted about it on Instagram. So I'm definitely gonna do that. I think this series has like a ton of books in it, which is really cool because I like starting long series. And then she also got me Sabrina. I think this is the first novelization and I absolutely adore this show. Is it a weird show? Absolutely, but I love it. And I love these and thank you so much for sending them to me other than have an entire planner crisis um, I also reorganized some of my shelves and then I hung up a bunch of pictures which I tried to put a clip in of but I don't think that went well then I organized all my book sleeves which freed up an entire shelf which is really nice and then bought this shelf for ten dollars from Target yes I did I had like fifteen dollars worth of points or whatever from the app and they were like do you want to apply your order and I was like uh surely so I did that and then my partner built it for me which was really sweet so I'm gonna just stop talking now because I need to go actually do things so that I can read and have an update but I'll pan over this in an aesthetic shot and I'll give you an aesthetic shot of the I did some stuff in the living room too so I'll just show you all of it that'll be fun okay I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>